Hey friend, welcome back to Seed and Sparrow Homestead. I'm Kelsey, we're back in the kitchen today and I brought out the big guy. We're gonna be doing some pressure canning today. We're gonna to make some shelf stable, convenient, ready to go meals for the pantry shelf. We're gonna do at least four, maybe five, if time allows today. I've been making some meal in a jar um, recipes for probably like the last two years and I love having them in the pantry so much. Such a quick and convenient but yet healthy meal that I can give to my family so much better than getting something from the store ready-made. Um, and they're so easy to put together. I'm gonna to show you just how easy they are. Um, three of the recipes are literally just preparing some ingredients and putting them into the jar. Processing them, there are two recipes that require a bit more hands-on work cooking on the stovetop first before we process them. Um, and I am going to not go super in depth into the pressure canning process. I am gonna show you each and every step. Um, I do have another video where I go super in depth and actually like explain why for a lot of the different steps that I can. I'll put it here on the screen, I'll put it down in the description. So today I will walk you through the process. We're gonna make these recipes here and we're gonna get some shelf stable convenient meals on the pantry shelf. Okay, we're gonna jump right into it today. All of today's recipes are coming straight from this book, the all new ball book of canning and preserving. I love this book. There's so many great recipes in here. Highly recommend it. Now, I am a by the book canner. I like to use tested approved recipes. That's just what I'm comfortable with after doing my own research. I always say you need to do your own research. Come to your own conclusions and it is your kitchen, it's your rules. But you can know that everything I share on my channel is always going to be a tested recipe. Um, now all of these recipes I have tried before so I can say they all taste great. We really enjoy all of them. Um, the first one we're gonna start with is a hearty chicken stew. I love this one. It's very easy to throw into um, a pie crust and bake it that way. I also like it with, I think it's like, is it Pillsbury? The puff pastry sheets, doing that on the top and the bottom is really good. And honestly, you can just eat it on its own. You can put it over biscuits too. So this one does require a little bit of prep work on the stove top. So I want to get to this one first to get like the work out of the way so everything else just goes super smoothly. Um, so the first thing we got to do, we got to prep a whole bunch of ingredients. I pulled out um, everything today is either beef or chicken. So I pulled out some roasts and I pulled out some chicken breast that has been thawing. Um, so we're gonna get all of that cubed up first and we have a whole bunch of veggies we need to prep too. Now that I have most of my ingredients ready, prepped for all of today's recipes, we're gonna start on this hearty chicken stew. I've got three tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna melt in here. And to this, we're gonna add a cup and a half of the chopped onions and a half cup of sliced mushrooms. And we're gonna allow them to saute in here for about three minutes. Then we're gonna add a half cup of celery, one and a half cups of carrots, and one cup of potatoes. Allow that to cook for like another two to three minutes. Now we'll add in five cups 
chicken broth. Add in a cup of white wine. That is totally optional, so if you don't wanna use wine, you just omit that. You don't replace it. Teaspoon of dried thyme. One bay leaf. Teaspoon of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Now we are going to bring this up to a boil and stir this together. I'm gonna get it covered and then once it boils, we're gonna allow it to simmer for 10 minutes. Okay, now we just add a few more ingredients and we're ready to get this into some jars. So we've got half cup of frozen peas, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and then three cups of our prepared cubed chicken. One, just going in raw. Two, three. All right, stir this up. I gotta find the bay leaf. We wanna take that out. Where'd you go? There we go. All right, hearty chicken stew. Ready to go. Now, like I said, I follow safe canning. Um, I follow the recipe and what's in the book. So, Usually I like to can my meal in a jar recipes in a quart size jar because that's just the perfect size for my family of four. This hearty chicken stew, however, only gives the option for a pint size jar as well as the processing time for a pint size jar. There's nothing about quart size jars. That's most likely because it wasn't tested in a quart size jar. They're probably gonna do that at some point, but they didn't when they published this. Um, would it be fine in a quart size jar? Probably, but I don't have the information on like the heat penetration. It probably wouldn't happen as quickly in a larger vessel and I don't have the right processing time for a quart size jar. So I'm going with what the book says. I am using a pint size jar and it's not really a big deal to me. I'm not gonna make a fuss over that. So you always have the option to decrease your jar size. If this says I can use a pint jar, I could use a half pint jar if I wanted, if I just wanted like a single serving. You just process for the same amount of time as a pint jar. So the pint jar is an hour and 15 minutes. A half pint jar would also be processed for an hour and 15 minutes. So no matter what the size is, I am filling these up to one inch of headspace. It, this smells so, so good. So we're gonna get this in here. I'm kinda gonna go to each jar right away just to make sure everything is like equally distributed. Don't want more of one thing than another in each jar, I'd like to keep it pretty equal. Um, now I said I would put this into like a pie crust or a pastry dough or over biscuits, but if I wanted to, um, after I open this um, to use, you could very easily just put in some cooked noodles or some rice and just to make this even heartier, beef it up a little bit, make it go a bit further, stretch it a bit more. That's always an option too. I'm gonna double check headspace here. So that perfectly filled a six pint jar. So that'll get us three meals. We're gonna wipe up the rims, apply some new clean lids and get our rings on. We're also gonna quick make another meal up and get that in jars because there's gonna be empty space in the canner if I run this by itself and that will not do. We need to keep things moving here. I'm gonna use as much space in the canner each time as I can. We always tighten to fingertip tight as far as your fingers will take it without like cranking it with your wrist. We don't wanna over tighten. That can cause buckling. I've got 
about two inches of water here in my canner. I have an all-American canner. Um, that's what my manual says to do. I have never used a Presto canner, so I can't speak to that at all. All I am familiar with is my all-American. This is a 921 model. So I've just got some simmering water in here. I'm gonna allow these to sit in here. They'll be fine for a couple of minutes while I work on another recipe. Okay, so apparently, my camera wasn't filming and I was just talking for like the last five minutes. But we're just gonna roll with it. So I'm working on another recipe. We're gonna do pot roast in a jar. It's very simple to throw together, put into some jars. It'll quickly allow me to get this canner going. So I have some ingredients already in here. Now, all of these simple one jar meals in this canning book um, are either for four pint jars or two quarts. I am doubling everything so I can do four quarts of each recipe. So, um, like I said, I will have the ingredients listed in the description for a single batch. Then you can choose how much you want to do. So for my double batch, I have four pounds of beef in here. Um, I, I think I just used a bunch of different roasts that I had in my freezer that needed used up. I think I had some chuck roast, some eye roast, and I think I even used like a sirloin steak because it was in there, it was getting old and it was a good place to use it. Um, even if you use like a lean cut, um, Honestly, the canning process, the pressure canning process transforms it. It will be fall apart, melt in your mouth when it is finished. Um, I did try and remove any like thick pieces of fat. Some marbling is fine, a little bit of fat is fine, but I try to remove the bigger pieces. It can interfere with your lids sealing, um, especially if there's any siphoning that happens. And I don't want any of my jars to have like a false seal and then have the end product go bad. So I try to remove as much of that as possible. So I have my beef in here, that four pounds. I did one cup of celery. Like I said, I'm saying the doubled amounts. And then two cups of onions. So I have one cup of onions in there, second cup. And that's when I realized my camera was not filming. A piece of onion here that was not chopped. So that's in there. Now, I need two cups of carrots. Let's grab those. Now you can totally just divide all of these ingredients up directly into jars. I just prefer doing this way. It doesn't bother me that it's an extra container to wash. Um, I don't know, for some reason it's just easier in my mind than having to divide it all. So, carrots. And then, those are our main ingredients. Now we need some seasoning. So two teaspoons salt. So I need four teaspoons. So one and one teaspoon of ground black pepper. So I need two, one, two. And we need some more bay leaves. Did I, I think they're still out. So I think it's one, yeah. It's one per jar, so I'll just put them directly into my jars. So don't worry about that for the moment. I need some garlic cloves and some thyme. I don't love thyme. That's not a safety element, that's a seasoning element. So instead of thyme, I'm gonna sub rosemary. I much prefer that flavor. So for the thyme, it says two teaspoons. I'm gonna do four teaspoons of rosemary. Okay, then garlic cloves, you need two cloves minced per recipe. So I'm gonna eyeball what I think. It's about one clove, two, three, four. Okay, and then, that's not gonna work. Wrong lid. Then we need a cup of dry red wine. This again, is optional, you can leave it out if that's something you're not comfortable with or just don't like the flavor of. We are gonna top this all off to the correct headspace with some hot beef broth. Um, I do like the flavor the red wine provides, so I'm just going to add that directly into my jars here. So it's one cup per recipe, so I'll need two cups, so it's a half cup per quart jar. 
All right, time to fill up these jars. Again, to a generous one inch headspace, and then we're gonna top these off with, wait, I feel like I'm missing something. Yes, I'm missing something. I forgot the potatoes. How could one forget potatoes? All right, so I need two cups of those. All right, so I'll just add some potatoes in there to so that guy and mix the rest in here. And I've got some hot beef broth here. I'm gonna top these off and then we're going to debubble them because I'm sure there's lots of air bubbles trapped in all of these things. You can see that one already bubbling. And then we fill to one inch headspace and grab a debubbler. Doesn't require a whole lot of liquid, honestly, because these are so jam-packed full of solids. This one was a little bit over full, so I'll just add that into here. Just to make sure. Of course, I took out a little bit too much. Let's see this guy. Just a tad. All right, again, we're going to clean up the rims here, grab some lids and bands. Now, I think the processing time differs um, between these two recipes. So whichever one is longer is the one I'm going to use. The other one will just have to process for a few more minutes, which won't really hurt it. So that's fine. All right, so I got three in there. One's gonna have to sit in the fridge until the counter opens up. So I'm gonna get my lid on here. Make sure it's all level. With the All-American, there's like a little arrow here to line up and they have these little hooks here, which I like for added safety. Um, and then we tighten directly across from one another, just until you meet resistance, and you do that all the way around, just until that resistance is met. Okay, and then we're gonna go back, we're gonna tighten even further, making sure just everything is even, and we're going to turn until we can turn no longer. Now, I am going to turn this up to high heat and we're gonna wait until we see a stream of steam coming from this vent. Once we see that steady stream, I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. It needs to vent for 10 minutes. I don't know if you can see that stream. Oh, it's not focusing. Can you see that little bit of steam coming out of there? It's still broken. Um, it's not a steady stream. We are wanting a steady stream, so I will come back when that happens. I think you should be able to catch that now. You see that nice steady stream of steam? You can even hear the difference. So now that we've achieved that, I'm setting my timer for 10 minutes. I'm just going to let it vent. 10 minutes of venting is up. This is my weight here for my elevation. I'm using 10 pounds of pressure. You'll have to check for your elevation to see what you need to use. So that's gonna pop on there. Now, we're gonna watch this gauge start to climb. We want it to climb up to 10 pounds there. It sits right around 10, 11. Um, that's just the way it is. And then once we get there on there, you're gonna start to see this and hear this jiggle. So once we hear that first jiggle, 
I'm going to turn my burner down to the sweet spot to maintain that pressure. And I want to listen for about four jiggles per minute. They last a few sec seconds each. And then as soon as that first jiggle happens, I'm going to start my processing time. Um, you need to maintain the correct pressure the entire processing time. If it drops below that 10 pounds of pressure, you're going to have to restart your processing time. So it is important to pay attention to that. Um, now the pot roast in a jar, those quart jars require an hour and a half. So just 15 minutes more than what the chicken stew was, which is, is fine. So we're just gonna do that longer processing time of one and a half hours. There's that jiggle. Before it gets out of control, I'm gonna turn it down to about five and three quarters. I put it just below six. I'm just gonna watch it for a little bit and make sure it stays where I need it to. And I see about four jiggles per minute. Okay, the processing time is just about up. So when that's up, I'm gonna turn off my heat and I'm not gonna touch anything else. I'm gonna allow the pressure here to come to zero naturally. Once it's there, we're gonna let it go for another 10 minutes to make sure as much of the pressure has escaped before removing the weight and then we'll go from there. Sorry, dishwasher's going. It's that time of night I needed to clean up. So this has been sitting now at zero pressure for about 15 minutes. Man, these are tight, hold on. They're very hot. There we go. So I'm just gonna start taking these off. Again, I like to do it one across from the other if I can get them. I always make sure to leave one attached last, like closest to where I am, just in case. Um, I mean, there's no pressure in it anymore, but I just like to be extra careful. All right, and then. Always lift it away from yourself. Be careful, there might be some water there, you see, dripping. All right, now everything looks good. That one had just a little bit of siphoning, but that's not a huge issue. Let's get them out of there. For our third recipe today, we're gonna make some beef stroganoff. So for that, you need two pounds of cubed beef, one cup of sliced mushrooms. I just used like the white button mushrooms from the store. One cup of chopped onion, and then you need four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, four tablespoons of tomato paste, two teaspoons salt, one teaspoon ground black pepper, two teaspoons dried thyme, two teaspoons dried parsley, and two garlic cloves minced. These get topped off with hot beef broth to one inch of headspace and processed for one hour and 30 minutes. There's a lot of background noise, I apologize. I have a load of laundry going in the washer. I have the dishwasher going, I have the air conditioner on. So it is quite 
late and I only just got the second load into the pressure canner um, the last recipe we did the pot roast and um, or not the pot roast the stroganoff and that one last jar of pot roast went into the canner so I'm waiting on that now I'm not gonna get to those other two recipes tonight um, and I wish I could say I just didn't have to worry about them tomorrow, but I do because I have everything prepped for them. So that's all in the fridge. Um, I don't have like the jars put together. I just have the ingredients chopped up and ready to be assembled tomorrow. So that shouldn't take too long. Um, so we're gonna make chicken chili verde tomorrow and we're gonna make a French onion soup I do have to cut up some more onions for that But it should be a fairly quick process tomorrow in terms of like hands-on work for me um, It's just really the processing time. I always seem to miscalculate just how long that process takes in terms of um, getting it up to pressure and then starting the processing time and then also allowing that natural release at the end so the processing time was an hour and a half and really it takes about two and a half hours until like the jars are out so I'm gonna get up early tomorrow morning and get the rest of it done I got a bit of a late start today too it was about 10 30 11 o'clock um, I forgot some ingredients and I had to run to the grocery store with the kids and my kiddos were on the struggle bus today for some reason they needed a lot more redirection and attention um, so that came into play and also i just forget how much longer it takes when i am filming it takes about three times as long quite honestly to get the task done which is fine um but i was a little bit bummed when i looked at the time I wasn't even paying attention and I'm like oh okay I guess we're done for tonight so I'm um, gonna watch this load here and then I will see you all in the morning it's 6 30 in the morning I wanted I was very tempted to go and just sit on the couch and rest for a little bit wake up a bit more but we're gonna get it done today and I want to get it done early so let's get to it first matter of business today we are working on French onion soup. I need to get four pounds of onions sliced up thinly. Then we're gonna get that over onto the stove top and we're going to cook that in some olive oil, salt and pepper until they are totally tender. So I mean, anywhere from maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, somewhere in there. I'm such a wimp. When it comes to onions, starting the day off in tears, questioning why did I put on mascara? I'm only on onion number four. Ugh. Now we remove the lid and it says to continue cooking this, stirring pretty frequently until the onions become nice and brown and caramelized. Everything's looking nice and caramelized. So now we're gonna go ahead and add our remaining ingredients. Three cups of white wine. teaspoon of dried thyme. Stir this together and we're going to allow this to reduce for about 10-15 minutes until most of the wine has dried up. And then we're going to add in some beef broth. Now that that has mostly cooked down, we're going to add in some broth. 
broth. I have three quarts of beef broth. We're gonna allow this to come back up to a boil and then simmer for about 15 minutes. Then it'll be ready to get into some jars. On to the last recipe. We're doing the chicken chili verde. I am doubling it, so I'm gonna weigh out four pounds of this cubed chicken. Prepped this last night. I have two cups of sliced green onions in here. Um, green onions and regular like slicing onions are not interchangeable. So if you can't find green onions, you can just omit that. You're just going to have a lower yield. Um, so I've got that in here and I also have eight tablespoons of chopped cilantro. Now the recipe calls just for a can of white beans drained and rinsed. I'm just using some cannellini beans. Get those in here. Next, it calls for some canned pickled jalapenos. Um, I checked to see if I could use cowboy candy. You cannot because there's just too many other ingredients in there that would not make this safe. So we need four tablespoons. So I'll need to do eight. Four garlic cloves minced. Need four teaspoons of salt. Um, and then the last thing we need is some of this home canned salsa verde from the ball book. Um, it's on page 167. So I need two cups of this here. Okay, it'll be right about these two containers. These all get topped off with hot chicken broth to one inch and will process for an hour and 30 minutes. Just a quick little reminder, the pressure canning does not have to be scary. I know it can seem intimidating. It was to me at first too, but as long as you are following your canner's instructions, you double check your work, you're mindful of what you're doing, you'll be just fine. My biggest piece of advice would be to start off with some practice canning. Just fill your jars with water. Can some water. It takes off that added stress so you can practice and get the hang of the process. Find that sweet spot on your stove top that'll help you maintain the correct pressure. And then when you feel confident, make some recipes up, take a deep breath, and just get some things canned. You can do it. Each time you'll get more comfortable and you'll develop somewhat of a trust relationship with your canner. Pressure canning is such a great skill to learn and a tool for keeping a prepared pantry. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments about today's video, the pressure canning process, the recipes. Let me know if you're someone that is on the fence about pressure canning, what is holding you back? And perhaps I can help you or someone else in the comments can help you overcome that and just get started. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed our time in the kitchen. You have a blessed week and I will see you next time. Take care.